Don't tell your mother. Kiss one another. Die for each other. We're cool for the summer. What's up, guys? <laughs> You know, there are times when you really just don't want to come off as a self-centered, conceited, left-wing jackass, but when the right wing just puts out a bunch of bullcrap, it just really makes it hard. Okay, so we all know that right-wingers are complete hypocrites. It's even more of a... but this one right here just takes the cake recently right wing uh, the right wing particularly the right wing christians but the right wing the, the pro lifers and conservative you know very conservative uh, individuals have been uh, have been just raising hell and have been uh, just going on on this crusade and assault you know rather against the against Planned Parenthood over accusations that they sell, buy and sell uh, fetal body parts. Now, for more on this, I'm going to provide a link uh, that completely debunks that load of tripe, but essentially it's... The, the, the pure and simple basics of it is they cannot do that. It is illegal, and essentially with that, with these the proof that the that they claim is actually misinterpreted it is actually talking about the donation of fetal tissue and that is legal and is only part of it and is mainly for research and a lot of other things uh, for instance research towards stem cells um, the helping to regenerate um, Tissue, uh, human tissue within people that may have cancer, or help to regrow uh, certain, you know, help to regrow certain uh, things in the in the human body, um, regrow, or not even regrow. It could any anything for med. It's for medical research, and even with that, abortions are make up a uh, abortion. Um, stuff makes up a small fraction about three percent of the things that Planned Parenthood does in fact most of what Planned Parenthood does is provide information and material on safe sex and prevention of STDs and STIs um, they provide contraceptive they provide um, they provide um, uh, counseling and stuff like that they provide you know um, testing for STDs and STIs and all kinds of other things. In fact, all of these make up a larger percentage of what what uh, Planned Parenthood does, as well as a barrage of other things. And these make up a large percentage over the small percentage of actual abortion issues that the pro-lifers are all so gung-ho about. But I digress. The issue came down because of this one video. And the thing that I find so insane about the whole issue is the fact that uh, they, they've been just so adamant. They, they've basically been waging this war against Planned Parenthood because apparently the war against women just wasn't enough. But now it, also, it seems that the shoe is now on the other foot as Republican presidential candidate Ben Carson has officially been found to have actually used fetal tissue for research to write and uh, wrote a paper on issue on uh, and wrote a paper essentially exploit you know and so essentially what he did is went on exploiting um, you know the so-called life that he he and the right wingers so desperately claim that they they are um, supporting the rights of and so, essentially, this man is criti and his party are adamantly criticizing the use of fetal tissue for research when he himself has done the exact same fucking thing. 
that does if that doesn't scream right wing idiocy as well as blatant hypocrisy, I don't know what does. This is a man who goes on defending the what he did, trying to defend what he did as well as trying to defend the right to life. And yet he's going to go criticizing the left for supporting the rights of women and support you know supporting and as well as supporting medical research so yeah i really don't it, it's one of those things that really comes up that comes up and you're left going dude do you even logic like seriously so i find it rather interesting that a man that's running for president and running for the Republican Party that has become like their new Herman Cain poster boy has become a... This man that's literally become the Herman Cain poster child is literally going to start bitching about, pro, uh, about the pro-choice activists when he himself has... Pre, you know, is pretty much doing the same thing that we're advocating about. So, you're basically going to, you're you're going to, except the only difference is he actually exploits fetal tissue for his own research and stuff like that. That he, I, which he most likely turn will turn around and start blaming the left for saying, see this, you know, this I had to use fetal. Uh, fetal tissue to back up the research that using fetal tissue is the wrong thing to do. Like, what? Like, is it really gotten to the point that Republicans cannot even use their fucking brainstem anymore? Like, do they not have any cognitive ability to think rationally and think for themselves, think on a critical level to say, wait a minute, isn't this guy doing the exact same thing that we're criticizing the left about? Maybe he's not as conservative as he actually seems. And so, I just find the blatant hypocrisy here absolutely amusing to me. That he, I mean, quite seriously, uh, Ben Carson, his, uh, by the way, is a neurosurgeon, and he's seeking, and he is seeking the GOP nomination. Now he's opposed to fetal. Now again, as I said, he's opposed to fetal research, and he claims nothing can be learned from it that cannot be learned in another way. He has flogged this position on Fox News and on Breitbart, which, frankly, are some of the most pitiful excuses for journalism I've ever fucking seen. In fact, Breitbart is actually more pitiful than Fox News. And that's saying a lot. Unsurprisingly, uh, w uh, while giving the, that opinion repeatedly during a campaign events in the Fox News Channel presidential debates, he neglected to mention his own paper where he used field tissue for research, which, by the way, on Daily Coast, there is links to that, but I will provide those links as well in the description box. Um, essentially, he's really going... Again, he basically uses... He falls into the same camp as certain pro-lifers who argue my abortion is okay, but yours is, uh, uh, but yours is immoral. It's basically the whole thing where I guess what I, how I can equate this is kind of like how Bristol Palin goes on bitching about abstinence, has a baby, has had a baby out of wedlock, and re, and after bitching about abstinence, we find she comes to announce she's pregnant out of wedlock again. So, it's that whole hypocrisy of the right wing again. Um, and Carson basically said that his fetal research was okay, but that uh, the fetal research that the pro-choice spectrum uses, that Planned Parenthood and different groups, that uh, medical um, groups and stuff like that do for research, is immoral. So, it, yeah... It's literally that whole hypocrisy that I, you know, that what I'm doing is for the greater cause of humanity, but because you, you know, you are 
because you're not a Christian, because you're not, um, because you don't believe the same things I do, what you do is wrong, and what I do is okay. It's part of that hegemonic sort of bullshit that, you know, typical, you know, superiority complex of cert of how certain Republicans are, and I just think it's again, I just find it absolutely amusing that. Um, I, I just find it absolutely amusing that he actually has the sack to even <laughs> to even claim that he's a pro that he's a pro life that he has it, that he's actually one of those people seeking seeking nomination and yet there's absolutely no there, there's no bitching from the right wing nothing at all about him do, doing what he's doing not a thing kind of the same way as everyone bitching about Obama being from Kenya but not bitching about Ted Cruz being from Canada I wonder why that is or you know the whole issue about how or just even the whole issue that you know what's another example I could use because I just saw one recently um yeah I, 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 I can't think of it right now. It's just absolutely amazing to me. <laughs> you know, and if that was not enough, then Ben Carson literally goes on to, uh, he goes on to bitch about how, um, uh, how the Black Lives Matter camp, uh, movement is um, creating strife and underscoring the awkward, uh, it, 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 it's literally, he literally goes out and says that it's causing strife. And the best way I can really describe it, as I really described it on my Facebook thing, was, uh, is quite literally, you're screaming about, you're screaming, you're trying to go screaming that it's, un, that it's, causing strife that it's what's causing the racism in America and that it's doing that this and this it's doing that and I find it just to be a typical fascist tactic that you're trying to turn the tables around on the other side of the spectrum that you know that whole we're not racist you are sort of bullshit you know that it's kind of equatable to how like the right wing tries to use tries to say that Nazism was not a right-wing, a far-right ideology. It was a socialist. It was a far-left ideology. That it's all part of this left-wing. That Nazism is part of a, le you know, the left-wing uh, sort of thing. Which is why the they're always quick to j say that liberals are Nazis and all kinds of things on different sorts of matters and opinions. It's essentially trying to f to take the heat off of them by completely ignoring all the facts and turning that shit around on the other side. It's the same thing. And I'd also like to point out that whenever there is a social movement to challenge the status quo, you ever notice how the ruling, qu cl the ruling class is always quick to try to discredit and put down and suppress the movement in some shape, form, or another. And usually the words that they use to describe this are thugs and hooligans and vigilantes and sometimes even terrorists. And I'd like to point out to those people that I'm pretty sure that the British thought the same thing about the Continental Army and anybody that supported the Continental Army and Continental Congress but, you know, that didn't really stop George Washington. So, you know, and that doesn't seem... And, you know, nowadays, those, you know, thugs, those hooligans, those, you know, those, you know, terrorists, they're, uh, they're those rebels, they're uh, now considered great heroic historical figures in America. Not sure how much they are in Britain, but definitely here in America. It's a one... I mean, it, it's a one-sided spectrum. It's one of those things where it's like you view the Ferguson, the uh, Harlem, you, you view the whole Black Lives Matter thing as a movement of 
of uh, people causing strife, a bunch of thugs, hooligans, and vigilantes causing trouble and stuff like that. That's a matter of your opinion, but that does not mean that it's fact. We There's no strife that's being caused by the Black Lives Matter movement. The Black Lives Matter movement was caused because of the racial injustice that was that came out of, well, a cop that had ties to the Ku Klux Klan, or at least the Imperial Klans of America, that's the appropriate title of them now, I guess, but yeah, had t he and his wife had ties to the, to the Imperial Klans of America and was acquitted by a predominantly white jury and a judicial system that that predominantly favors, well, law enforcement, cops. Go fucking figure on that one. But no, it's the Black Lives, it's the Black Lives Matter movement that's causing the strife. Yeah, sure. And it's also the fact that people like the, you know the All Lives Matter and the Police Lives Matter groups are coming out and trying to counterbalance the Black Lives Matter protests. It's like, yes, all lives matter, but we're focusing on the black lives at this point. Because, frankly, your life as a white person does not necessarily come into danger on almost a daily level by law enforcement. You are not discriminated against. You are not, you know, you... Base, you are not profiled. You are not. You do not suffer, at you know, the. Uh, you, you do not suffer, from basically being. Forced into it in a part tied like poverty, because you as a white person have privilege. That doesn't mean to say that white people, aren't don't have don't don't suffer through prov through poverty, but, white people have a certain level of privilege and are allowed to and basically have this have certain protections that keeps them from having to live in that that protects a lot of white people from having to live in slums and there's you know white people are also predominantly more inclined to get jobs Despite what the xenophobic anti-immigration idiots say, white people are far more likely to get jobs in the United States than their black or Latino uh, predecessors. In fact, even more likely to get jobs than their Asian ancestors, uh, ancestors, their Asian predecessors. And it's one of the it's one of those things where you know white people are they have they do they have a lot of privilege and because of that and because they have so much privilege and that gives them the right to they, they have this very colonizer very superiority complex in some shape form or another as well as the fact that that in, is inclined to make them believe that white privilege does not exist or that their particular position makes it so that their that white privilege does not exist and that's bullshit. White privilege very so does exist. To deny that it doesn't exist is a very is in itself a very white supremacist and white colonizer mentality. It's a very first worldist mentality at that. So the fact that Ben Carson that I find him saying this shit is pretty much a lot like how it was with Herman Cain uh, a couple of years ago and how um, it is with um, uh, Bobby Jindal down in uh, down in Louisiana. These people are poster childs for the GOP's absolute, you know, for their white supremacist and very, you know, very right wing, very right wing racialist policy. They basically put a person of color out into the into the world to make statements for them and claim. Oh, how can we be racist when we have this person saying what we believe? How can, you know, it's like the Black Lives Matter thing is a, you know, is 
uh, is actually the thing that's racist that's causing the racial divide in this country. We're not causing it. No, 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 it's not us. It's the liberal. My, the fact that, that what they're going about in this whole thing just really seems to me like because they're essentially what they're doing is putting a, a person of color out into the community and trying to take the flack off of themselves. And really by doing this, it, it's... The best way I can describe it is it's a kind of a bit like... It's kind of like how there's a use of a human shield in war, typically by a colonizer against another group of people, and typically within this group of people they have allies that will side with the colonizer. Um, usually for, you know, giving them the false hope of some sort of benefit that will come out of it. And, es and, es and essentially what happens is that they end up sacrificing themselves for the colonizer. And the colonizer essentially is, uh, puts them out there as human shields to take the brunt force of the attack. And that essentially is what Ben Carson is to the Republican Party. He's literally taking the brunt force of the predominantly African American, but also probably Latino community as well. But the but he's taking the attack from the people of color, and he's and, and essentially taking the brunt away from the Republicans who you know who are typically white, and who would normally be getting the full force of the attack. But this gives them a person that they can that everybody can you know be angry against and focus their attention against and taking away the force and stuff like that while also propping themselves up and saying say and saying hey we look good you know and what is funny about this ironic funny and ironic about the whole situation is by doing so they make themselves actually look more racist actually making them their whole movement of pretty much very blatant xenophobia, homophobia, uh, transphobia, and, you know, the, you know, just, and Islamophobia, it's making them actually, their white supremacist actions actually look worse by doing this, but because it's so cleverly disguised and presented so well, is that it doesn't actually make them look racist. So it, it, so it's kind of one of those things where it's like, you are racist, but you don't look like it. But, you know, it's one of those things where they clearly are. What they're doing is an action that is very, you know, that, that's, you know, it, what they're doing is, act, is actually pretty petty. Because it's, and it's cowardly, because it's literally hiding behind this, you know, shroud of ignorance and stuff like that, so, you know, and... You know, take and um, you know, not confronting the actual issue, rather trying to deny that the issue exists, but instead and try to uh, disguise it and by saying, "Yeah, we're not racist. The left is racist. This black man says it." So basically, so yeah, basically, you know, just because you have you managed to find somebody who is willing to basically be your human shield you just because he happens to you know say something ma makes it just fine and dan ma makes it just fine and dandy to continue to commit this oppressive you know regime against people of color against minorities no it it's it's absolutely insane this is an absolute horrendous fucking tactic it's absolutely sick that what the the GOP is resorting to. I mean, they've done this before with the whole issue with Herman Cain a few years ago. You know, trying to basically have a African American candidate who actually almost nearly got the nomination, but at the same time we can't have a black president, and then they reelect Obama. <laughs> so it's one of those things where it's like you bitch about how you know all of this, and yet. Yeah, it's just really it, it's it, it's sad and petty and sick of what the GOP is doing. But uh, yeah, anyway, that was just a little something that I wanted to talk about and 
I just kind of wanted to clear the air with it because this was absolutely because I find it absolutely weird how the Republican Party claims makes so many of these claims about how they're pro-life and how they're you know uh, and, and everything else and yet they just continue to show their complete ignorance their hypocrisy and their and just utter stupidity frankly it's it's really their last ditch effort they're clinging to life and so desperately trying to find it's it really is kind of like that uh, you know that bully on the playground that continues to bully others because he has no friends but and desperately craves the attention and the acceptance but and so he thinks that by bullying others that he's going to you know become the popular you know the popular you know big man on you know on at school and really it just makes you at the end look like a complete dick so they're really literally hanging on by a thread they're they're petulant childs that are that are just clinging to life desperately looking for the acceptance of the american public and pretty much it's kind of the the, the only people that they're most likely going to get are their main constituents um you know right-wing ignoramuses and other ignoramuses that don't really pay attention to their you know to the hypocrisies and you know yeah maybe a few third party candidate a few third party people but really the, the republican party does not seem like it's going to actually gain any real head you know any real wiggle room because the if i mean the best person that they really have running for them is Donald Trump and i mean it's sad and scary to think about how many are actually supporting Donald Trump but at the same time there's also a lot of people that have been that have been ardently republican and stuff like that some that actually have supported Donald Trump and some that have just been like I want off like literally people jumping off the train as well so it's hilarious really and it, it at the same time sad because you know you have to look at the beginnings of where the GOP was essentially the Republican Party goes all the way back pretty much to the time of the dawn of the country they are the longest surviving political party I think in the world and they are literally going to crash burn and die because of the the fact that they have been hijacked by extremists for so many years that they've had people like Ted Cruz and Donald Trump and John Boehner le leading the party for so long and or at least Donald in Donald Trump's case you know trying to gain the party's leadership and acceptance to become you know the main guy you know and and when considering the fact that most that there's a lot of people that would even most likely vote for Hillary Clinton over Donald Trump is also quite interesting because Hillary Clinton's kind of like the centr the centrist candidate the moderate candidate and Bernie Sanders is well the new neoliberal he's he's the socialist he's the pe person that's going to bring this revolution when he's really just nothing more than a neoliberal reformist but you know he brings hope to the to the liberals and stuff like that donald trump is just you know is like the conservative you know poster boy up there for everybody in the you know who's ardently you know so right wing lined and hillary clinton is basically the person that's kind of the moderate that will probably that could get libertarian independent and some of the democratic vote possibly some women uh some women voting for but i think most i think what's really going i mean this is actually something that you that hillary clinton could actually run on an independent scale and still get a fair number of votes i mean this is actually something that an election i that could actually be could, could actually be one of those things where it actually doesn't end up being like you know one person and one person it could actually be three people but, but uh, to be re but realistically I think that how it is going to play out is the fact that 
more pe- I think that Bernie Sanders is looking as more like the person that could actually become, you know, that, you know, who could literally become what o- what everybody thought Obama was going to be. And essentially, I hate to make that comparison, but that's what kind of it, it is. It's Bernie Sanders is taking on that light. But at the same time, Bernie Sanders is, you know, looks way better than, like, Donald Trump. And Hillary Clinton looks way better than Donald Trump. So, it's, you know, but at the same time, Bernie Sanders looks better than Hillary Clinton. So, anyway, I began to babble, and that's not what this point was about. Um, but, anyway, I'm Norcal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and this has been Norcal Corner. Peace.